Let's take a look at how we can use UDIMs inside of the new COPS context, as well as how we can use them inside of Karma. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. Let's drop down a SOP create here. And we need an object that we can work with that has some UDIMs. So I'm gonna drop down an HDA here called the sci-fi building. It's going to give us a sci-fi building that it will spit out. Let's give it a random seed here. So something like, I don't know, 43. Should give us something interesting to work with, hopefully. So this sci-fi building generator was created by an artist named Mathis. I, I commissioned him to create this for us for uh, Patreon so that we could have some models to, to work with. So this is available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. But like I said, all credit goes to Mathis, super talented artist. I'll leave all of his links in the description so you can check him out. He's got some really awesome work that he's done, super unique stuff. Uh, that I haven't really seen anyone else do. So definitely check out his links in the description. And if you wanna contact him to, to work with him, all of that information will be down there as well. But let's take a look at this. So we have our building here and it's got some, some nice shapes going on. If we look at our UVs, we have some UDIMs here that we can work with. So if you don't know what a UDIM is, basically when you go to texture any sort of assets in 3D, you're going to lay out their their UVs, or you're gonna unwrap them to a UV space. And normally that falls within the zero to one space, which is what you're seeing in this first square here. So everywhere that this UV grid is on. So we lay out our UVs into this, this grid, and then we can start to texture our object. Now, when we need more detail in our textures, we wanna have multiple textures for one object, we need to set up what's called UDIMs. And it's basically just these squares, these UV squares that are laid out all next to each other. So we have our individual UDIMs here. Each square is called a UDIM tile or a UV tile. And the first one is going to be 1001. So that's gonna be this first zero to one space. So our first UDIM tile. Then it's gonna be 1002, 1003, 1004 and 1005 and so on and so forth. So that's going to be important to know for later. Let's jump back to our viewport here and we can jump out, come over and create a cop net. And before we go any further here, I do want to point out that this is in version 20.5. And I say that because if you're watching this in the future and it's like Houdini 21 or like past Houdini 20.5, where, where COPS has had some more time to be developed, this is probably going to change because it's, as it currently stands, UDIMs are really just a pain in the butt to work with inside of COPS. Uh, they are manageable, but it's it's not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. So hopefully we have some, some added controls for this in the future, and I definitely anticipate that that is going to be something that changes. So let's drop down a stop setup. This is just a recipe that I created that just lays down these nodes for us. Dive into the stop import here and drop down an object merge. And we can just create, just select that sci-fi building that we had created. And if we take a look at our rasterized setup here and we set this space to UVs, you think by looking at this that we would have access to all of our UDEMs. But unfortunately, when we come to our rasterized geo, everything gets collapsed down to that first one. So we have only access to that first UDEM tile. And basically, if we take a, SOP, a copy of the SOP import, and we take our preview material. If I were to plug this into our geo and then our rasterized geo alpha into the space color, well, what I would hope would happen is that it would place this texture only onto the UDEM tile that it is associated with, which in this case is the first one. But if we look at this, it doesn't have any way to differentiate that yet as it currently stands. So it places it all over our object. Or if you want to think about it in a different way, it's like taking our object's UVs here and moving all of these tiles that are outside of this first tile into this first tile and just copying the textures. Those textures now fall onto all of them in that same spot. So. Um, it's basically just overlaying all of those textures onto each tile or just copying this 
copying this alpha onto each tile, which is not ideal. So we have a couple ways that we can try and deal with this. One way is that we can come in here to our SOP import and we could just blast away all of the all of the geo that doesn't correspond to the first UV tile or the UV tile that we're working with. Um, the other way, which honestly, that's how I, I recommend working because otherwise you're kind of just flying blind to, to some degree. Um, but once you want to actually view your textures on your model, you need to actually render them inside of Karma. So we'll look at that here in a moment, but let's take a look at the SOP import. We need to look at what happens with our UVs here. So if I come back to this rasterized geo, I'm going to just look at that and I'm going to pin this in our viewport and jump inside the SOP import and drop down a UV transform. So we can take this and we can start to translate this. So we take this to negative one. You see we get our second UV tile here, which is nice because that means that we can start to actually build textures on other UV tiles. So we can move this further and we can get all of our different UV tiles based off of that. So if I take this and I do a one minus dollar F, we can align this with our timeline. And now I can just scrub through our timeline and you see that we're getting a different UV tile for each one of our, our frames there. So we'll need that here in a moment. But um, like I said, you can do all sorts of things here with you know, texturing it. So you could do the normal, like, um, to ID, you do like a, or like a, uh, what is it called? A, you do something with the IDs, mono to ID. Um, we need to like our connectivity. That's the word I was looking for. Segment by connectivity. And then we don't need this. And now this gives us some IDs that we can work with and select some different things based off that. Or you can, you can come into your actual geo and place on like different groups and things, and you can export those in order to, you know, isolate materials to work with. So that's how I would recommend working with that. But once you actually want to go and export these and see your textures on your actual model and see, you know, what they all look like together, you are going to have to bake them to disk as far as I know. So currently I don't know that there is a way to export things directly from COPS to Karma without baking them to disk if you're working with, with UDIMS. Um, if you know a way of doing that, then by all means, please let me know in the comments. But uh, unfortunately right now, from what I've seen, there is no way to, to do that. I've tried a couple different things and it just doesn't seem to to work, but like, we can still bake them to disk. So let's take a couple of constants here. So we have five different tiles. So let's just create a different constant for each tile just to show you know, that we're actually working on the different tiles. We can set this to, I should have set them all to RGB. Let's see, well, let me change them all. I don't know. Let's come to the color and give it a random color here. We'll just give it a different color for each individual tile. Doesn't really matter. Like I said, these would be the, the what we're doing here is just basically replicating, creating a, a full texture for each tile. So once you have all of your textures created for the individual tiles, you're going to want to pipe them into a switch. And we can just wire them all in here. Whoops. And our last one. So once we have this, we can come into our input here, do dollar F. And if I look at that, we're going to get our second input here because it's going to select input one. So in computer terms, this first input is actually input zero and then one, two, three, four, so on. So we need to take our input, so our dollar F, and we need to subtract one so that we actually get this constant here. Once we've done that, we can take our switch and just press control C, and then we can drop down a ROP image output, and we can paste our cop path into that path right there. And that's just going to make sure that we're exporting what we have out of this switch node. And I'm gonna come into our parameter interface. I'm going to take an integer, drag this over. I'm gonna call this tile. 
because we're going to be creating a tile number that we're going to use as a wildcard for our output file here. So we'll take this and we'll do $F. And as I said before, the first tile corresponds to 1001. So 1002 would be the second tile, 1003 would be the third and so on. So we need to add a thousand to this basically. So we're gonna take a $F plus 1000. And now we're going to have that tile number corresponding correctly to our UV tiles. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna copy that parameter and I'm going to overwrite our dollar F4 with that. So paste relative references. And then we can just call this like base underscore color. And we can take this and render this to disk and that's going to give us all of our files. So now if we come in here and do a material library, let's unpin our viewport as well. We can wire this in. I'm also gonna drop down a material linker so I like to work with the material linker for assigning our materials. Let's jump into our library here and let's drop down a Karma material builder. And we can drop down a material X image. We can wire this into our base color. So that's what we output. And in our file name, we need to select our, our files here. So we have this udems underscore you know, whatever our name is. And we have this dot 1001.exr. So we need to change this. If we uncheck this show sequences as one entry, uh, we should, well, actually I've messed up and I forgot we need to come to our cop net. We need to output all of them. I need to change this to render frame range and we need to delete that channel and then just render to frame five. And we'll render to disk there. So now it's just generated all those for us. And if I come back to our material library and our image node, now if I uncheck this show sequences as one entry, you see all of our files here. So we do actually want to have this as one entry, but we don't want it as a frame range. We want this to be as our UDEM. And you'll see that that $F changes to a UDEM. So we can now select that and press accept. And if we come back up, and we assign that material, you can see that we have our material being assigned in our viewport. Now, sometimes this doesn't actually update and it only shows one, um, our first UV tile. I'm not sure why, uh, but if that ever happens, you can just start your render, which is all this little button does is so just start Karma XP rendering. And you can see that we have our object that is now displaying all of our different UDEMs. So each one has a different color assigned to it as we had uh, generated and we get you know our different UV tiles based off of that. So that is unfortunately how you have to work with UDEMs inside of COPS as it currently stands. Like I said, I fully anticipate side effects to work this out and, and make this better. I think this is just kind of their first release and yeah, it's like I said, it's still in beta, so um, it, it's going to get better, but uh, this is like their first release, and, and this is how we have to kind of work with it um, until then. So like I said, you're going to have to kind of build your materials a UV tile at a time and go through and just blast away the other geometry that doesn't correspond to the tile that you're working on and you know, just kind of try to build it that way if you're going to work with multiple UDEMs inside of you know, Houdini. Um, currently, I would not recommend doing so. I would just jump to like Substance Painter or something until we get some some better workflow for this. But um, if you do are just bent on using Houdini, this is how you're going to have to kind of massage it to work work for us. So anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. Thank you guys for watching. I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel. If you want to learn more about Houdini, then you can do so on uh, those videos. There's a bunch of different topics that I've covered, covered a lot of stuff about cops. So if you want to learn more about the new cops and Houdini um, 20.5, then definitely check out those videos. But anyways, like I said, check out Mathis and his other work because he did a, a great job on this this generator for our our patreon um like i said that is available on patreon as well if you want to grab it you can do so on there anyways thank you guys for watching and have a good day